Hello, this is Jason Tickham with LMGI. Today we're going to talk about product manufacturing information, or PMI. When you're in Solid Edge modeling or Solid Edge assembly, you'll see a PMI tab. Uh, I happen to be in the ordered modeling mode within the part, so I do have um, a couple of special, or at least one special command, copy to PMI. Um, but you notice you have dimensioning tools here in the dimension group. You've got some radio buttons that control how the dimensions and annotations appear on the screen. I would encourage you just to experiment with those. There's a make increase size and decrease size. So the model size PMI, PMI is kind of like what you'd have in drafting, where it's, if you zoom in, the dimension gets bigger. Or, but pixel size, uh, the, they'll always stay the same size um, relative to your computer screen. And then you have some annotation tools, callout, datum frame, and you can make sections for cutaway views. And then you would create a model view, uh, which is probably analogous to a drafting view or a drafting sheet. Uh, and that would capture all the visible uh, PMI uh, annotations uh, that you have created at that point in time. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, do that. So I'll start out with some general notes. Now um, the very first thing I might do is make a view and I'll call it notes. It's going to capture the view orientation so this would be a nice starting point um, for my notes and I'll grab the callout command. I've got some notes prepared and then um, normally you would have a nice flat plane, but we kind of, I'm showing you this as a little tip to um, choose the features plane, and we can use the model view as a feature, so therefore my general notes will be established right squarely to the screen when this model view is applied. Uh, now, if you were working in synchronous mode, you could probably make yourself an angled plane, or you could probably switch to ordered mode just to do this one feature, which is what I did. Um, this is mostly a synchronous model. It really doesn't matter too much uh, which mode you're in. So I'm actually going to hide that now by turning up all my PMI. And let's come around and do a front view. And Synchronous has this ability where you click a face, and if there's any dimensions attached, um, this is kind of nice. So you can turn them all off, and you can just click a face, and then if you get a few on, you can right-click and show attached PMI. So that's really just kind of a nice, easy way to show only just a few dimensions. But you can certainly just go ahead and continue uh, dimensioning. Now I'm going to use my, my favorite uh, I am looks like I'm locked to a previous plane, so I'm going to tap F3 on the keyboard. I'm going to use my favorite uh, smart dimension dimensioning tool. And another little tip, this is one of my favorites. I set my dimension type to feature callout because smart dimension is uh, pretty smart. And we'll just go ahead and place uh, that hole. Now, smart dimension is so smart that if I click two holes, it can know that I'm doing a distance between, so it doesn't do a call out. And if I hold the shift key down, it will do a aligned dimension. So let's do another one here. And if you brush over one and move off, you'll get an automatic stack pitch. Uh, let's maybe position things a little bit, make them a little prettier. So there's just a couple, uh, a couple of dimensions that we've placed. Uh, some were just the original PMIs that were in the model, and then some additional ones I added, which are, um, you notice they have kind of a magenta color, so they're neither driving nor, uh, you can't drive the model with them. If you click, uh, you'll notice you won't get the, the edit definition uh, field like you would on a regular PMI dimension. Um, but they'll work fine for uh, the whole model based definition or paperless or however you want to think of it but pro for creating product manufacturing information um, it works it works very well so this would be our front view so we'll go ahead and make a new model view I'm just gonna call it front super easy 
Um, and then let's see, let's do a, I'm going to hide them all again. And I'll come around to the top and grab my smart dimension again. And uh, I think I'll maybe do something from here to here. And actually, I think there's a there's another dimension already there that's got the tolerance already in it that was used in the original design when it was made. Um, so that looks pretty good. Uh, I think there's probably a width dimension here somewhere. I'll just put one in. It's no big deal. It doesn't hurt to have. Um, Actually, if you did this as you as you designed, if you created these views, it would be a really slick workflow. Let's add a, this may not be a great example, but let's go ahead and do a datum frame. And I'll leave that as A. There's some settings in there for our datum frames. Um, let's go ahead and uh, I think that will work. So let's, let's make this A. And then I'll add a feature control frame, and I'll say, uh, so what I really wanted to do, actually haven't created any GD and T in a little while. I probably should get the reference out, but I want to refer to, this is a great feature. This is in drafting as well, reference. So you can actually refer to A via a reference. So I want. I want it parallel to A within uh, half a millimeter, and I'll uh, hit OK, and I'll place this here. So that looks pretty good, and that reference is really cool. So what that does for me is if I ever come here um, and change this to B, whoops, a big B, I don't have to remember to go change my my referring uh, annotation, so that's a that's a reference or a pointer uh, to that to that datum frame. So that is very cool. So I'm going to make another view here and call this top. And I'm not going to get too carried away. I don't want to you know spend a lot of time creating dimensions. I kind of want to give you the basics. Um, now I'm going to hide my PMIs again. And I do have a little sketch that I, I created down here just to, to save a little bit of time. Uh, so I'm going to go and create a section view. Um, maybe from that sketch. Again, you can do this in order. Uh, one little tip, when you're in synchronous, this will appear to be dim until you create a sketch. So the workflow, remember, you create the sketch first in synchronous, and then you do... Uh, the feature in uh, in ordered mode is just a little bit different, so you probably know that I'm I'm doing this one in ordered mode. Um, and as far as the um, extent, I'll get off a midpoint here and right click on that to be cut. And there's my cutout and finish. And I think I'll I'll just uh, zoom in on this a little bit. Maybe I'll even leave that sketch visible like that. It's kind of nice. It it makes it clear that this is, um, you know, kind of a fake cutout. You know, you could certainly use use part painter and paint that with a, a different style so it's clear that it's not an actual part of the design. It's just a visual cutaway. Uh, and then let's um, let's make a view and just call it section you could call it whatever you want. Now, these settings become interesting. Um, the shading, I think, is pretty pretty easy. Uh, you could actually make it look just like a drawing um, using visible edges, I guess, or um, shaded with visible edges is, is typical. But if there is a section view, this dictates how that actually shows um, how that section view shows, and if you wanted to see the cutting plane uh, while that was applied, you could do that. Uh, and I'll just hit OK. So there I made another uh, model view. So here they all are. They're all kind of piling up here. 
and if I uh, right click you can apply and you can right click and apply so that looks pretty good and right click apply that takes me to the top and I right click apply and that takes me to that section uh, I'm going to go to my notes and apply view uh, I'm not quite sure I made a little mistake here my um, because the notes was created first um, the callout did not exist um, when that was created so you just simply you can um, you can right click anytime you want and add to an existing view and I'll just add that to notes or you can uh, edit the definition of this uh, of a model view so when you choose edit definition and then you simply turn on whatever you would like um, and then you finish um, if you also edit definition um, again you'll see there's some settings for um, like we saw earlier and there's also some some nice right click conveniences that you can do like if you want to just simply redefine the view orientation or something like that now this review uh, is actually really nice if you were having a design review or a discussion so there's um, you can just rip through these these different uh, model views it or you can select them from the list here um, very fast uh, very uh, convenient uh, way to create your model based definition in Solid Edge.